So now we are joined by Kevin Kurz from The Athletic. And tonight marks halfway point of the season for the Sharks. Uh, clearly playing better over the last couple of weeks. Uh, if the Sharks can take both of these games against the Blues, um, a team that has given up just as many goals as San Jose, uh, that could present an opportunity, uh, the schedule, to make up some ground. You got six against Arizona, three against Anaheim, six versus L.A., uh, by the time the Sharks even see Colorado, their spot might be locked up, not have much to play for. I mean, do you think the, the Sharks have an opportunity to get back into this? I know the last time I looked on the athletic, I think Dom had them at about 2%. Yeah, no, they're not a playoff team. I, I don't think, you know, to me, the ceiling of this team is a 500 team and usually 500 in the NHL doesn't get you anywhere close to a playoff spot. Um, you know, L.A. is better, a better roster top to bottom, I think. Minnesota, same thing. You know, they still have a handful of games against those guys. Um, it's not like Arizona is a pushover or anything either. Um, and, you know, those teams are all looking at the Sharks and thinking the same thing. <laughs> the Sharks might be looking at them. So, um, no, I, I don't think that I don't really think they'll ever get close enough where a playoff spot will become attainable. And that's, you know, not not to be pessimistic. It's just it's not a, it's not a math thing. It's a talent thing. Um, they're not deep enough. You have your third and fourth line NHL centers probably shouldn't be in the NHL. And, and I hate to be that hard on Dylan Gambrell, but he's got one goal in 20, whatever games. Um, he's more responsible two way. I just don't see NHL there. Um, and the other guys are, are, are fill-ins at this point. Um, so sorry to <laughs> be pessimistic, but no, I, I don't see, I don't see playoffs for this group. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm the other thing you have to keep in mind is too. remember, these are all division games. So moving up in the standings is even tougher because you're not going to have uh, the L.A. Kings losing to uh, the Boston Bruins. You know, they're, they're going to be losing to the Arizona Coyotes, who are going to get two points. Right. Yeah. So um, I just think that in a year like this but, and you know, listen, the, the start, I think uh, on the other side of the coin, I think this, I think people don't realize how difficult the circumstances were for this team with training camp being in Arizona and starting on the road as they did. I mean, those were just brutal circumstances where I don't know that any team could have gotten through that and come out, um, you know, with in a solid playoff position. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so if they're not going to make the playoffs, then I want to ask you, who do you think is maybe most likely to get moved? Uh, I don't, uh, it seems like Colorado might be out of the Dubnik uh, picture at this point, but who do you think is most likely to get moved? Who's your dark horse that maybe no one's talking about? Well, you know, that's obviously a big difference between this season and the last season is last season when they, you know, the wheels were falling off in early January and everyone knew Brendan Dillon was gone. Um, you know, we knew that Patrick Marlowe and Joe Thornton both might um, move on. Marlowe did, of course. Thornton wanted to, um, as we found out the day after. Um, you know, it's the guy I keep coming back to as a potential big name to get moved is Brent Burns. But that would be such a such a complicated deal to pull off because one, he's got the very limited no trade clause. And he makes $8 million. And the salary cap we now know is going to be flat for at least the next couple seasons. Um, you know, I wonder if Dallas is, is a possibility there. Um, he's got his ranch nearby. That's where all his family is. They've struggled a little bit. Um, is there, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, uh, hypothesizing here, but you know, I've heard, uh, is John Klingberg a guy that might make sense? Um, you know, maybe the sharks give up burns and another asset for, for a guy like Klingberg and retain some of birds salary. I mean, you know, these things are always possible, right? Um, but uh, I think at this point, um, you look at a guy like Matt Nieto, um, maybe Marlowe, if he starts to play a little bit better. Dubnik, of course, I think he's going to have to play a little bit better uh, over the next few weeks here. He becomes a potential, maybe not, if not Colorado, maybe a team like Washington. Um, so, you know, there's not a whole lot there. I think if you're an opposing team looking to, looking to go shopping, you're going to look at the Sharks roster, and I don't think you're going to be overly impressed. Yeah, well, I, I mean, if memory serves, last time I looked, their record at this point through 27 games, uh, <laughs> they were better last last year. And 
They had a good November. Yeah, they had the great November. But yeah, but even that, that November, it was a lot of. Uh, I remember talking to Pete DeBoer after after he got fired, and he said even even when they were winning those games in November, it never quite felt real. And I remember thinking the same thing. I didn't think he was going to get fired. Uh, in fairness, I, I I did not see that coming because I thought he deserved a little bit more rope. But um, that November was sort of fake. Yeah, well, if memory serves, I don't even think they left the Pacific time zone until like the very last game to go play Arizona. So, yeah, you know, you had, a, but I, I think you could make a case that this team, you know, this team is weaker than last season. Yeah, you absolutely can make that case. I mean, you look at, uh, you, you look at guys like Barkley Goodrow and, you know, Joe Thornton was still effective. I remember telling everybody at the time of the trade deadline, I'm like, this guy can still play. And I remember they put him with Timo Meyer. Finally, they get, finally gave him some, some decent line mates and he started to play a lot better. And, you know, he's been good in Toronto with obviously those line mates are a little bit different level, but um, you know, Joe was on the, obviously the third line center he, you know, Joe Thornton is a much better third line center than what they have there now. The guys they've been rotating in and out, um, even with Thomas Hurdle back in the lineup. Um, Barkley Goodrow was, to me, he was the team MVP at the time they traded him. And Absolutely. <laughs> that tells you a little bit, I think, about last year's team. But, um, you know, Dylan obviously was on that team for that long. Um, and then, you know, the obviously the unfortunate part of last season was when they actually did start to look a little bit better is when all the injuries hit. But, um, you know, last season was not a result of injuries. They were one of the healthiest teams in the league through Christmas, and they were still in last place. Yeah, well, I also remember Wilson saying, you know, hey, we think Sorensen can hit 20. We think LeBanc can hit 20. And, you know, both of them definitely had off seasons. Yeah. Um, now, Let's get to uh, the Carlson comments. Uh, you, you think people are making too big a deal out of this? It seems, you know, you got John Scott talking about it, ever <laughs> saying, "I didn't come to San Jose for a rebuild." Yeah, if you look at the if you look at that quote in isolation, it, it you know, or just look at it on Twitter, maybe you maybe you could read into that. But like I wrote, I mean, I I was on that call at the time. I didn't even think I thought the comments were interesting, but they sure, certainly weren't uh, earth shattering or anything like that. There was no sort of indication that he wanted out, no indication that he's not on the same page as Doug Wilson. I mean, like I said, it was more a reflection that he's is on the same page as Doug Wilson, where he thinks they can build around the current core and they can quickly get back to contention. Now, listen, do I agree with that? That's a whole different story, but that's what Doug was saying last Friday. And, and, you know, they have to say that a little bit because I think they're locked into so many of these core players with the contracts they have and with the no movement clauses that they have. So they really, you know, a full rebuild here is not, is not really possible uh, the way things are right now. Um, but in terms of Carlson's comments, I thought they were much more innocuous than most people, you know, than some people made them out to be, you know, I was, I wasn't scouring the internet to read the reaction. Sometimes you just look at Twitter, which is a, a total cesspool to begin with. Um, but then I saw Mark Mathot chime in uh, on Sheng Peng's tweet. Um, he was the one who asked the question about it. And I'm like, geez, this must be, this must be uh, becoming a little bit controversial when really it shouldn't, it shouldn't be. Well, when you were on the call with Doug Wilson, um, did you find yourself thinking like, didn't I hear this last season? Like <laughs> I heard a few yeah. things. Yeah. Well, the difference was, so the difference, you know, when the season first shut down last year in March, the, the tone that Doug was, was taking was we're going to make some moves. We're going to get this fixed quickly. You know, we're maybe going to move, flip this first round pick for a player that can help now. And then I think when they realized that fans weren't going to be in the building this year and financially, or they were going to have to take a bath, no matter if the team was good or bad, they said, all right, let's, let's look at this a little bit more realistically. Do we have a, do we have a team in place that can compete for Stanley cup this year? And everyone knows that answer is no. Um, so, you know, using it, the approach, makes sense based on what they have and what they can't move to me. Mm -hmm. And I remember writing about this in, in June or July. I'm like, they should use this more as a, I called it a transitional season. Doug used the word reset, but I think it's the same thing where you let, 
the young the younger guys had a chance to play in the Barracuda last year. Let's see if they can come up and let's see if they're NHL if they look like real NHL players, right? Like Shemalevsky, who I'm sure we'll see a little bit more of at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, Blitchfeld, um, Gregor, yeah, Gregor's another one. Uh, you know, Alex True, guys like that. Um, let's see if these guys have potential to be NHL at least NHL role players. Um, so, you know, they can do that, you know, I'm sh- and, and, and Bob even touched on it yesterday when I asked him about it, you know, they know where they're at in terms of the organization and there is going to be a rotation of young guys from the Barracuda to the Sharks. And I think it's going to be pretty frequent uh, for the next seven weeks here. And by the end of the, by the end of the season, they should have a much better idea of what they have in, in these young players. And that'll help them with their, you know, help them proceed to, you know, rebuild around, around the current core, which probably isn't going anywhere, you know, Seattle expansion draft pending, but um, you know, they are probably guys like Carlson, Couture, Vlasic, uh, Kane. I mean, these are all unmovable contracts, I think um, for at least the short term. <laughs> Jones. <laughs> Jones yeah. Well, Jones, they could buy out. I could see them buy out Jones. Um, I would argue they should buy out Jones. Uh, you know, his, 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 his uh, buyout numbers aren't, 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 aren't terrible in terms of the penalty. So, I mean, you, you think Wilson is going to, I mean, we all know that Hassel Plotner seems to be, you know, just tight with Wilson. Wilson's my guy. That's, you know, that he's going to get us there. I mean, you think Wilson can dig himself out of this hole? I mean, cause it seems like it all started with giving Burns the eight by eight, like before then Wilson was always like, you know, no more than five years. Like I'll give out no trades and no moves like candy on Halloween, but I'm not going to go longer than five years. Yeah. And the Burns thing opens the door. And what happens after next season when hurdles up Ferraro, Knizhov, Leonard? That's well, <laughs> yeah, that's why I've argued that their, their primary goal right now, other than, you know, hope, help, helping some of these young guys develop is just get rid of salary. Any, any possible way you can, um, you know, if that means if that means making Brent Burns, who I think has been fine this year, and I think is a guy that could could at least still be effective throughout the course of his contract because he takes such good care of himself and he and he's he's such a gamer um, and he you know is careful with his diet and all that. Um, you know, do you leave him exposed? You could almost walk him to Seattle with the way things are shaping up. You know, as I've argued in the past. <clears throat> um, and it's not like he doesn't have a very marketable personality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, do, do you do that at the expense of, of, of losing Burns and hope that a guy like Ryan Markley can come up from underneath and, and fill that role next season as the offensive defenseman on the right side underneath Eric Carlson? Um, you know, Jones is unmovable. You know, Kane, obviously, you know, we, we, we're not sure what's going on with his contract now with, with, with some of the legal stuff that he's going through. Um you know, and he's been great, but is this team going to, is this team going to compete for Stanley cup in the next two or three years when he's still in his prime? I mean, probably not. Um, so is he, you know, is, is, is that a contract that, that again, is that maybe one that you try to walk to Seattle where they would take it on? Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, those, again, those two guys, I think have been effective this season, Kane, especially in the last month, um, but I think you look, have to look at the overall big picture and, um, again, just the goal should be, let's get rid, let's, let's open up some salary here because the only way this team's gonna, gonna make the steps necessary to, to compete and, you know, sooner than later is if, as if you do, you got to move some of these pieces out. <laughs> <laughs> well, finally, uh, what do you think is uh, is just working so well for Joe Pavelski right now? I mean, off to the best start of his career, and it's just such a polar opposite. I mean, we saw Marla go to Toronto, you know, and did okay, but yeah. I mean, Pavelski's just been on fire in Dallas. Like, you know, the first year, first half of the season of you know last year, it took him some while, some time to get adjusted or whatnot, but he was huge in the playoffs. Right and now, and now he's just on fire right now. Well, I know, I know at the start of last season, he was still suffering. Remember he got hurt in that blue series. And my understanding is he was hurt more severely um, in that game. I guess it was game five than we ever found out. Mm-hmm. And, 
it lingered into last season and, and he was strong. I mean, I know he wasn't, he wasn't really doing much there. Um, but, uh, you know, he got that time to recover and then came back and we all saw him in the playoffs and he's just continued it. Um, I don't know. They, that guy's just a total badass. I don't know how else to put it. He's just, <laughs> just everything about him. That guy's just a hockey player. He, 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 he just works his bag off. I mean, he, he keeps himself in shape. He's such a leader. Um, he's a guy that every single person in the dressing room respects just from where he came from as a seventh round pick. Um, you know, Dallas as a team, they're a little tough to judge because they've just been through the ringer with COVID and getting all their games rescheduled. And yes, they've struggled. And, you know, they also have had, had some injuries with Tyler Sagan not being available and um, Ben Bishop again. So, you know, I, despite uh, Pavelski playing well, I know Dallas as a team has been struggling to get wins, but, um, you know, them and the Sharks, uh, it, it's tough to judge them just because the circumstances of their seasons have been so strange. Yeah, well, and then you also had the weather issue that, the, you know, that torrential weather that they had for a hot second. But Yeah, yep, exactly, yep. yep. But boy, it's uh, it's pretty amazing to see what Pavelski's doing, because you know, because like you mentioned, it's not as if Dallas is a wagon. He, you know, Pavelski isn't doing this on Tampa or Toronto or whatever. You know, he's doing this on a team that is marginal. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, it's fun to watch still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks so much for joining in again. Yeah, no problem, AJ. And uh, so what's going on with The Athletic? Is there a uh, is there a discount code or something? I saw you promote something not too long I ago. I think we have a dollar dollar, dollar uh, per month for the first six months for new subscribers right now. Um, yeah. Awesome. The, 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 I think the discount deals are becoming less frequent than, <laughs> than they used to be. So, <laughs> take maybe, advantage when you can yeah maybe jump on it while you can and you know it, it's, it's still going to be an interesting couple months here i think um just because we'll get a better look at some of these young guys and and there are some hopeful things right Matt, the way ferraro's playing john leonard coming up and playing well um you know i think there's a pretty good chance at some point we see one of these two rookie goalies uh whether it's cornar or melnichuk play play a couple of games right now it's looking more like cornar is the better goalie this season um so, you know, it'll be intriguing, the trade deadline in another few weeks. Um, and then, you know, off, off seasons are always interesting. Yeah. And I, I think, like, Kanijov seems to have been a happy surprise this year. Yeah, he has been. Yeah. Yep, yep, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I mean, he wasn't even really on the radar um, for me. But then we found out he put on, like, 20 pounds of muscle or something in the offseason. So that's one, way to, that's one way to break through. Awesome. Well, thanks again for joining me, man. Yep, no problem. Take care.